Question. Scientists use fossils as evidence of human evolution. They use fossils for a whole bunch, not just human evolution, but in this case, this is this question. The brain volume <laughs> of extinct primates has been estimated from their fossils and have been compared to the brain volumes of living primates. What are the living primates? It is your chimpanzees, your apes, so your African apes, and us. Okay, we are the living primates. All right, the results are shown in the table below. You have to understand the table the same as you had to do the phylogenetic tree. So this is all blah, blah, fish paste. Okay, you've got the primate here. So we've got, again, Ardipithecus, we've got Australopithecus, we've got Homo habilis, Erectus, Neanderthalus, us little hum Homo sapiens, and then we have our little modern apes. So your chimps, your apes, etc. This is when they lived. So the period, remember we go backwards. We start off where it is. Um, this would be 5.8 Maya, and we're going to go cruise all the way up till the current, present day. Okay, so it goes in the opposite direction of a normal graph. Now look here, Ardipithecus only had 400 cubic centimeters average brain size. Then Australopithecus had 450, so it gets a bit bigger, which means a little bit more intelligence. Then Homo habilis goes to 750, so quite intelligent. Homo erectus, but look at how interesting this is. Homo neanderthalus had the largest brain volume, um, but they, <laughs> they, they were before us. And then here we go, so maybe we lost a bit of brain power along the way, and then we have our apes are only at 500. So let's look at how we answer these questions. Okay, apart from fossil evidence, give two types of evidence for human evolution. Now, there are only three for human evolution, okay, fossils, and genetic and cultural evidence. Okay, remember that tools were found with habilis and because tools were found with homo habilis, it shows the cultural part of it. Alrighty, now, which primate became extinct first? People, people. Which one became extinct first? I mean, this one lived from 5.8 to 4.4. Um, the next one was four. So which one became extinct first? It was Ardipithecus ramidus. So I'm not... Um, okay, let's write it. Um, so you're just going to put an A. So you're going to put A. And then it was ramidus. I hope I've spelt it correctly. But the A is the genus name. And that is the species name with a small letter and a full stop. Okay. The brain of an organism is not preserved as a fossil. No, really. It rots. It decays. What do they find? They don't find soft tissue. They don't find hearts and lungs and stuff. That rots. It gets eaten by maggots and stuff. What they do find are the bones. Now, that's something else I wanted to quickly tell you. Listen. Fossilization is a process. So you've got this skeleton and then it must be dry and you have a layer of dust and then another layer of dust and then another layer of dust and then to preserve it. Okay. The problem is that, that scavengers come along and they carry off a nice femur or a nice tibia and they go nyan, 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 they go chewing away. Okay. So that's why we very rarely find whole fossils or whole skeletons. We find pieces of skeletons because the animals have eaten them. Okay. Um, fossils get stuck, they, they sort of underneath rocks and places where scientists can't get to. You've got carbon date or, or at least um, dating. So, you, you know, dating them is also, fossil dating is also, it's a challenge. So there are lots of uh, uh, problems with regard to, to, to looking at fossils, all right? But in spite of that, we've sorted it. Now, they say the brain of an organism is not preserved as a fossil. No, it de de decomposes. So how do scientists determine the brain volume of an extinct primate? I think they wanted to give you a mark here. Clearly, what's going to happen? They're going to measure the volume of the fossil cranium or the fossil skull. They're going to measure that, and that's going to tell them, ha, the brain was X, Y, Z size. All right, people. Um, calculate the di oh, difference in brain volume in cubic centimeters between two living primates. Okay, so where are two, two living primates? It's the ones that says present and present. So it's Homo sapiens and modern apes. It'll be 
Um, 1,400 minus 500, and they're going to give you marks for this. Come on. So you've got 1,400 minus 500 is going to equal to 900 cubic centimeters. And there you go for two marks. But they could also say to you, what is the percentage difference? Then you would say 900 over 1,400 times 100 is equal to whatever percentage that calculates to. So it's about 60%, 64, I don't know, use a calculator. But there you go. Okay. Um, give evidence in the table that suggests Homo habilis and erectus may have existed at the same time. Now let's just quickly look. What's it? Habilis and erectus. So we go. Hannibal. There we go. Habilis and erectus. Now habilis was two two to one six. So let's put two point two to one point six. Okay. And Homo erectus was from two. Okay. To 0.4. So look here, when did they coexist? From 2 to 1.6. I mean, how easy is that? So, uh, both, both, no man, both existed between, what was it? 2 and 1,6 Maya. Okay, so there's the overlap. They both existed in that period. So yes, they did exist at the same time. Um, Ardipithecus was the most primitive of all the prime, uh, primate genera. Uh, okay, that's easy because look here. The most primitive, why? It had the smallest brain capacity. So that's what you would write. You'd say the smallest brain capacity and also it lived a long time ago. And then state three characteristics that modern humans share with apes. Now people listen here. Look at your hand, okay? Your hand. You've got one. We all have, all right? While you're sitting in that exam and they ask you, they're going to ask you for characteristics that are shared between humans and the African apes, okay? Look at your hand, it's in front of you. Number one, we have opposable thumbs. That's one mark, okay? Means you can hold. Number two, we have bare fingertips. Number three, we have nails and not claws. So there's three marks already. Number, uh, number four, we have arms that freely rotate and wrists that freely rotate, okay? We have stereoscopic vision. Because just like the African apes, we look with two eyes in front of us. Not sideways, two eyes in front of us. Okay? And we can therefore judge depth, and so can they. All right? Um, we have few offspring. Now, I've given you six different marks there. Just make sure you know three. They never ask more than three. All right?